Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to show you some of my favorite techniques for taking senior portraits. So we're in the woods in Ohio. Um, we picked this spot specifically just because of all the cool tall trees, it was, it's very unique. You can see the sun is behind me coming up, so it's creating some really unique shadows and we're getting a nice rim light. There's a lot of flare, so it's there's a lot of possibilities here. If it was directly overhead, we might have to shade her. It wouldn't be as good right off the bat as this is, but this, this is really gives us a lot of advantages and a lot of options as far as different ways we can shoot. I can overpower that if I want to. I can let a lot of flare come in, but we can definitely also use all these shadows and light, light streaks coming in through the trees to our advantage. Okay, so we start. I took a natural light shot first, which I typically always do to get the exposure in the background light. That's I always start like that. I always start with the background first. The natural light shot allows me to expose from the background, so I get that how I want it to look. And I had to shoot pretty wide. I'm well, very wide, all the way wide open, really two two point eight. And then I had to slow down my shutter speed too to get ambient light because it is it's it's shady in here, and so it's you know it's not very bright, even though it looks like it's the naked eye. So I had to get that right first so that I knew that I could see detail in the background because I don't want it to be dark. You know, and then we turn the light on. You can see that while the natural light shot looks okay, the light really adds another element to it. it. It warms her up a little bit and makes her stand out from the background. There's a lot of things to consider when you're doing senior portraits, obviously. Um, today, I knew I was shooting a female. We were doing just her regular casual pictures, not sports. That, that played a factor in, in deciding what kind of modifiers I was gonna use. So I, I like to stay light and move quick whenever I shoot senior pictures because I want to give them the client as many options as possible. So typically I'll use a large octa, medium octa, or a beauty dish. In this case that's what I used, a white beauty dish because it's a little bit softer than the silver with diffusion. I knew that it was going to be a little bit darker in here because of all the shade and we do have a bright sun behind us but I knew that if I underexposed that then it would make all the shadows too dark so I was going to shoot relatively wide open and keep as much detail in the trees and the shadows as, as I could. So I knew I was gonna need something a little bit softer. That's why I chose white with diffusion, so I wasn't gonna have to overpower anything. The majority of the time I'll use one light, but we have a second just in case, and that, that worked to my advantage today because we got some natural flare with a lot of shots and, and, some, and some rim light from the sun, but there were also a few cases where the rim light wasn't hitting her necessarily. So what we did was put an orange gel on that second light, which is the seven inch reflector that comes on the FJ400. And then that allowed us to mimic the sunlight in, in areas where we didn't actually have it coming through for the rim. So the FJ400s are perfect for shoots like this because like I said, I do like to stay portable and move around a lot because I want to give the client as many options as possible. So, you know, a lot of times my favorite shot may not be their favorite shot. So I want to do at least a few different looks in one spot, three or four, and then do several different angles for each one. I'll change lenses. I, I only have two lenses that I typically use, a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200. That allows you to shoot wide and compressed. So two totally different looks. Um, and then also I try to shoot tight middle wide on just about everything while I'll zoom. So I'll zoom out, zoom halfway in, zoom all the way in. If you, th if you think about it, when you do that vertically, that's three shots and then you go horizontal, that's three more. So that's six pictures literally in the same spot with the same pose. You can do smiling and not smiling, that's 12. So if you add that up and then, and then not only that, you could move, take a step, maybe a couple steps to the left, have them look over their shoulder, like and look in the same direction you were just at and you move, then that gives you even more options. So that gives you a lot of different pictures with one spot, with one pose. And if you shoot like that, you can move relatively quickly, especially with lights like this. You, it's good to have light stands, but in a situation like this, if you're lucky enough to have an assistant, which I did have assistance today, then it might actually work to your benefit because they can move quicker and it's easier than having to set up a light stand in you know where there's like logs and trees and stuff like that sitting around it's it's easier for the person to actually move with the light
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure and let us know in the comments below which one of these setups was your favorite.